Hello everyone. I'm back. I'm wedging some clay here. Um, everyone uh, was asking about um, these red birds I make. So this video is about my red birds. How to make my red birds. And they're really, I mean, they're really simple. This one, his nose got a little bent. <laughs> Um, so when you lean them up against the side, cause this is under glaze. So the under glaze should not stick to the kiln shelf. Um, as I've mentioned in, in some of my other videos, um, um, some, I've had some stick and I can tell you the Amico velvet under glazes do not, I've never had any problems with them. So that's, that's all I use now. I still have some speed ball back there, but, um, prefer to use the uh, Amigo velvet under glazes. I'm getting white clay all over it. <laughs> it looks like it has a, a, a mold problem. So anyway, so the legs, now I'm using white clay today, but I usually use dark clay, but I ran out and I went to my clay supplier and uh, this is um, standard 266, but they didn't, they had zero boxes of that so i did get a kentucky mud brown but i thought i'd use up some of the white clay i have so this is going to be out of white clay but anyway um so i use these uh, metal twisties from uh, they come from the garden section or, the, or actually the floral section of i get mine from hobby lobby and there are four um dried flowers and stuff i i don't know if they wrap the flowers with them but anyway that's what i use for the legs and then um i use just the copper i have some old copper wire that i stripped the plastic off of and uh but you can buy it without that on there and then i put copper wire as the as the hook so that's what i'm that is what i'm showing you how to make today so let me i don't know if i can hook this back i i've been spending time cleaning up my area here it's actually pretty clean now. That may not doesn't look all that clean, but it is clean. <laughs> it's cleaner than usual. Let's see if I can get a hook here. There we go. And hook that over here. There we go. Yeah, we may not be good back here. There he is. Nice oh, hanging there. Okay, so I'm gonna wedge this clay up. I have a um I have a giant slab roller over there, but sometimes it's just easier to, you know, if I'm, if I'm making a bunch of stuff, I'll use the slab roller, but if I'm not, I'm just going to use, uh, I'll just do it by hand. And it's a little soft, so what I'm going to do, let me lower this. You don't want to look at me. You want to look at what I'm making, right? <laughs> there we go. So I have this. Uh, I always work on. Uh, this is birch wood. Um, I used to use canvas way back when I didn't realize that clay dust is toxic. So you do not want to work on canvas. Um, it produces too much clay dust. But this is a sh this is a piece of hardy backer board, and if my clay is a little too soft, then I will wedge it on here and just look at that moisture. It'll pull the moisture right out of there because I don't want it too soft that it won't um, stand up. You know, I don't want it to collapse when I'm working with it. So. I think that's pretty good. All right. Wait till you see the size of this roller I have. Rolling pin, I should say. Okay. I use these, um, you can buy for like 99 cents at the hardware store. They're just two foot um, paint stirs, like 99 cents. That gives me my uh, thickness. So, look at the size of that rolling pin. <laughs> when 
when I ordered this online, I didn't realize it was quite this big, but it's, but it's really nice. I can't remember. I've had it for so long. I can't remember where I got it from, but, um, if you want a nice big rolling pin and not, you know, some tiny thing where you constantly have to, you know, you get the edge marks as you're rolling it out. See how it's sticking there a little bit? I don't like that. So, what is everybody up to? I have been, I've been wanting to make a video for you guys. I know everybody's been asking me about the red birds and then some purse planters and so I do want to make those still but last I've been sick for the last couple of weeks um, just gosh it's some kind of a head cold and cough I could not get rid of so I didn't want to start making a video and start coughing so that's why I haven't been making any videos and then I was supposed to be in the pumpkin festival um, I think some of you who follow me um, I've been talking I was talking about the big pumpkin festival I was gonna be in I made all these pumpkins and um, my son had a medical emergency that morning and we had to rush him to the hospital um, I have an adult son who's special needs and um, he had a grand mal seizure which he's never had before and um gosh talk about terrifying Whew. that was scary so i don't know it was just like one thing after another so i decided to have a sale at my house so i did sell some stuff but but i do have to open up my empty shop um i just been busy working too because I teach and um, I've been teaching um, the Girl Scouts and had I actually had um, the seniors from this uh, senior living facility yesterday oh my gosh making ornaments they had the best time so I always try to compress my clay I know some people don't believe in it I don't know, they, you hear people say, oh, it doesn't really do anything, but I believe it does, um, because when I'm compressing, you know, I can see little air bubbles coming out, so I think it's important to compress. What I was going to say before, too, is I don't use uh, canvas anymore, but this birch wood, um, you can get that from Home Depot, it's already pre-cut. Um, and it's not very expensive either. And what I did is I rubbed a little um, linseed oil on it just to protect it, I guess. Um, but that works out great. And it doesn't, you know, your, unless your clay is really sticky, um, your clay doesn't stick to it either. So let's see. I don't want it real thin, but. I don't want it and then yeah I don't want it I don't want it thick either but this is really soft probably <gasps> ah well I'm gonna lay these little pieces over here on the hardy backer board so those get hard enough I'll make the beak the beak and the feathers out of those but yeah this is I hope this works um, Hmm, let me see. I got an idea. I got another big piece of hardy backer board here. Hardy backer board is basically um, concrete board. There we go. And I don't like to work on it um, all the time because it sucks the moisture out so much you have to work pretty fast or you end up with a really um, a really hard surface and it will crack as you try to bend it but this is just so soft I don't know why I added water to the bag of clay when I put it away I don't know. 
I don't know why I did that. I guess I was thinking that the it was just kind of soft. That's why I got this bag sitting out here. So, okay. Let's see. So, we're going to cut the body out. And all of mine are a little bit different. I'm working on a pattern, but I haven't quite, um, I don't know. I didn't like the way it turned out the last time. This is not quite as smooth as I wanted it. But there we go. Okay. Let's gently flip this. It is a beautiful day here today. I think we've got, I suppose, a rain, I think, tomorrow maybe. But it's about it's about 50 degrees and sunny, and the leaves are, well, most of our leaves have fallen already. It's just so pretty outside. Okay. I've wasted enough time, right? Okay, so let's pull this in a little further. Hang on. There you go. I think you can see better now. So, okay. So, I'm going to find a couple nice spots in here. I'm going to cut the bodies out. And basically, all they are, I cut about, uh, let's see. That is 10 inches long. There we go. So, okay, so that is 10 inches long by about seven, seven inches this way by 10 inches that way. So that's one side. Then I'm going to lay him down and cut out another one. And this is this probably is a little bit bigger than what I think. Normally I go nine inches, probably, and seven. But like I said, it doesn't doesn't matter. They can be any size. So I'm going to lay this over here on this other piece of concrete board or hardy backer board, whatever you want to call it, while I am cutting out the beak and the feathers. In that way, that'll give this time to harden up a little bit What before we get to that. So, okay, I'm going to cut out two feathers for each side of him. Yeah, let's see. So, I just start here. And then do three scallops. So can you see that? So now I'm gonna lay it down and cut out another one. This is so easy, and there's so much fun to make. I'm going to lay this on the wood, because I don't want those to harden up too much. I want to be able uh, to adhere those to the bird's body, so I want this kind of nice and soft. So, for the beak, um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to do the tail. So, for the beak and the tail, 
I actually want that a little bit thicker than uh, the body or uh, the feathers or Thanks to everybody who follows along and subscribes. I sure appreciate it. It's always fun to hear your comments and uh, hear about what you guys are doing. And it's always uh, and it's always interesting to um, hear where people are coming from and where they live. And the only thing is, I have a lot of people commenting in a foreign language and. Unfortunately, I cannot read them. Um, I thought, you know, some people can um, translate them somehow. I thought there was some type of a, I don't know. I don't have a translation button on mine. And I don't know if you can add that. I have to look into that. Okay, so, but I appreciate the comments and everything. Okay, so that's pretty thick. I'm going to cut it off and show you. So you can see that's pretty thick. Now I'm going to make the beak. And the beak, I like, I like the straight line across the top. Come here, little birdie. So I like how this is straight all the way across. Um, so I'm going to cut... It's not going to be an act, an actual triangle. It's going to be some other kind of triangle. I didn't, I didn't go far enough in math to figure out what kind of triangle that is. <laughs> okay, let's see. So we're just going to cut down and up. So see? So this will be the top, and it'll be straight, and then that'll be the bottom. Lay that aside, and then I want to cut the tail. So the tail, let me see what it looks like. The tail, let's see, um, go straight across. And then come down. So, so see that? So this will be the top. This is the part that hooks to the bird. So that's what that looks like. So it's kind of like a lopsided heart. Think about that when you're cutting it out. Okay, so I think this clay is probably hard enough. So I'm going to get rid of this because it's kind of a fine line um, if it gets too hard. And it doesn't want to adhere. And I've got a little bit of slip here. Okay, so... <clears throat> Oh, and the eyeballs. Got to make a couple eyeballs here. Oh, yeah, I got the... I think those are probably a little bit big. There you go. <clears throat> I almost forgot to cut out the feet. Okay, so there's those. Let's look at all my parts. The tail. Beak, that beak is a little big. I think I'm gonna cut it cut it down. There we go. 
I want to cut the feet out. I keep. Let's see. So, okay, so there's the. There's the beak. And then let's roll the. Do the feet. The feet, it doesn't really matter how thick they are. Um, I don't, I don't like them too thick, but it's, you know, it's not really important. So I just cut a little, this, I cut the feet really the same way I cut the, the wings, only they're smaller. See there? So those will be the feet. Just trim in between his little toes, and you can. I'll smooth this down with a sponge later. Get all this clay boogers off of there. Yeah, I went out to my local clay supplier today. I wanted to get some more underglazes. Um, gosh, they're out of almost all of them. They didn't have the bright red that I like, or the bright yellow. Um, I mean, if you're gonna buy underglazes, like I, a lot of them, I like the you know I like I like the mix mine. And if you don't get the bright colors, you'll be forever. You'll use way more underglazes to mix and get the color you want if you're buying colors that are muted. Um, So I, I think you, uh, if you follow me too, you, you saw that I bought a cinnamon red, which is pretty, but if you use the dark clay, that cinnamon red gets really dark. So, um, I wasn't, I wasn't as happy with that. And that's one bird that has not sold yet either. <laughs> People just like the the brighter red and if I use a dark clay I still have a lot of brown come through the bright red so okay I'm gonna lay these feet aside and when it's not tacky anymore I'm gonna put holes holes in there I just want to kind of smooth the edges can't believe we are getting ready for Thanksgiving already. Thanksgiving is next week. Wow. Okay, so there's the feet. Now I think I have everything. Okay. Oh, and these sponges. I want to tip on a sponge. These are the best sponges. If you buy, you can buy these in like a, a six pack or a you know, these are like a buck at the dollar store. I just love these, and then I cut them in fours. Just take a scissors and cut them in fours, and oh my gosh, they are the, I love them. They're the best sponges, especially just wiping up the table or wiping off glaze or, they're really nice, and they're just super cheap if you buy them that way. Okay, so next step, you'll need a serrated rib, and that's what I'm going to, rough up these surfaces with. So I'm just going to take this along the edge. Sounds like an ambulance is coming by. Oh, let's see what it is. I'm going to do it to this side and... Oh, I missed it. I think it was, I think it was a police car. Okay, and then I'm going to do this side. So this is going to be the inside of the bird. I'm just roughing it up. 
And I'm going to take, um, where's my brush? Let's see. Take an old brush and some slip. I like to mix um, a little vinegar in my slip. You can use straight vinegar. Um, a lot of times I do that, I just use straight vinegar. But, gosh, this stuff stinks. <laughs> you ever get that where the clay, oh my gosh, the clay, the clay sits and it smells like the sewer? That's what this smells like. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'll put a little bit on here. I don't want to. I don't want to put too much because I don't want to get it too wet. Actually, I forgot. I forgot one step. Well, I didn't really forget it, but I got ahead of myself. Um, but if it does get stinky, you can put a touch of bleach in it or put some um, vinegar in it, and that should get rid of that. Okay, so here's the other one. To puff it out. I put this, I got the one of these, they're just a styrofoam ball that you can buy at Hobby Lobby or probably Michael's or anywhere. And you can use any kind of ball. It doesn't have to be styrofoam. But I lay that on there. And now that I got this all gooked up. So you just lay that over the top and you just kind of Gosh, must have been a bad wreck. I hear something else coming now. So and you just want to kind of stretch that out like that. Oh, that sounds like a fire truck. Yep, that's a big fire truck went by. Somebody probably had an accident. We live on a, a, a steep hill and it sounds like the, it's probably around 3 o'clock and the kids get out of high school and they just, they go flying down the hill. Okay, so you can see that. How I puff that out. So we're going to lay that down there. And then we're going to take this one. I'm going to lay this one right in the middle here. And we're just going to tap it. Get a little bit of a uh, crack in there. I'm going to smooth that out. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to tap this a little bit just to try to stretch this out, kind of plump it out so it's not flat. Whoop, stuck. If you get sticky clay, you can just add a little bit of cornstarch. I use cornstarch all the time. It just burns out in the kiln. Now this clay, um, it, it's still a little more damp than what I really like. So you're better off, um, you know, using a little bit stiffer clay than what, what this is. But this was just so wet and I really want to make this video. So I thought, well, we'll just go with it, right? We'll just go with it. Okay, so let's see. So once you get these two pieces together, you want to get them airtight because once they're airtight, they won't collapse. So work on the bottom. There we go. Let's move this back a little bit. I think I need to get a better wide angle camera. There we go. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to tap. I'm just going to squeeze around the bottom part. This is where the feet go. Okay. If you can kind of see him. Gosh, here comes something else. I'm trying to move this camera back. 
All right. So, goodness sakes. Hmm, there goes the ambulance. It must have been a bad wreck. Okay, so. So I'm going to get these two together. Gosh. I think what I'm going to do is um, add a little newspaper in here, which I normally don't have to do. Now the newspaper will just burn out in the kiln. Okay, so since this clay is just so soft and it's not holding its shape, I'm gonna put this inside here. There we go. See it tucked inside there? And it will just burn out in the kiln, so don't, don't worry about that. So there's his, there's his body. Doesn't look too good now, does it? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take I'm going to smooth this edge over. And it's to smooth it down. There we go. See how that's all nice and smooth now? Just kind of straighten it out. And I'm going to do this side. This normally isn't this messy, but. Okay, smooth that over there. So I am going to um, start loading stuff on my Etsy shop this weekend. If you're interested in anything, let me know. Um, the hardest part is just taking all the pictures because I make everything I make is like different. So you literally have to take a picture of every single thing and um, and weigh it in everything. Okay, so. Now let's do the top. Well, let's see. First of all, I want to make sure the top is straight. And it, and it I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it bows down in the middle a little bit. Like right here. So. I got this little tool that I love. Some people use a cheese slicer, but I got this from Paul Van Gilder. Yeah, vangilderpottery.com. And I love that thing. If you're using a, if you're making plates or bowls or anything and it's humped over a mold, you just run that around the side of it and it just cuts it right off. Nice and smooth and clean. Okay, so I'm going to take off the top of this. cutting off the ends where the beak's going to go and where the tail's going to go. I'm going to take a little more off here so that's nice and flat across the top. And then I'm going to smooth this down.
to go teach pottery in a little bit where I teach at um, the rec center, at a local rec center here, here in Cincinnati. And tonight is our last class. We're glazing tonight, so should be interesting. First time glazers, you have to make sure they don't they don't add too much glaze because it will run all over the kiln. Okay. I can't say he's the handsomest bird I've ever made, but yeah, he's still he'll still be good. And once he stiffens up, it'll be much easier to to smooth him out and stuff. So I'm going to dip this in a little bit of water. Okay. Let me lay him down. Because he's pretty soft and whew, hard to work with right now. I'm going to score the back of this peak. And I'm going to add a little bit. A little bit of that slurry. A little bit of that slip. I'm going to trim a little bit off the top, the front here. So this beak, so this beak fits more snug. There we go. And then I'm going to take one of these pieces here that I cut off. And I'm going to roll it like a little, little snake, little worm. And I'm going to wrap that around here. Not the top, I'm just wrapping it around. You can see that. I'm just wrapping it around, not around the side, underneath, and then around the other side. So not, not the top, because I want this to stay smooth. I want that to stay flat. And then I'm just gonna work this in on both sides. And this is the same thing that a lot of people do when they're making a mug or a bowl that's hand built um, where the seams match in the bottom of the bowl. A lot of people put this um, little, little worm in to help uh, stabilize the sides and make a smoother transition. I think I've, I think I've broken. <laughs> two of these uh, trying to pack them up for a show I broke uh, the tail off of the one I have behind me otherwise he'd have been sold at least when I break something I don't feel guilty keeping it I get all the I keep all the hand-me-downs or not hand-me-downs all the seconds <laughs> so all the pieces of pottery in my house are the ones with crack in it or something Sometimes I, you know, break them up and throw them away, but it's so hard to do that once you've put so much time and effort into them. Okay, so let's flip him over. Oh. Yeah, it's best to let this clay firm up a little more. I should have left it on the concrete board a little more it would have been so messy but I'm smoothing down his beak now Okay, you can see the beak now. 
Oops. And then I can take him and straighten him out a little bit. So now I need to add the tail. And I think I'm going to cut a little more off the back here, straight down. And then score that good. And then I score the back of the tail good. And add a little bit of the slurry, a little bit of slip. Now, since this piece is so thick, I don't, I don't know how much. Let's see. I may not need to add any. Well, I think I am. Add a little worm here. I just don't want that tail coming off. That is the weakest point on the bird, is where the tail joins the body. So, but these, these sell really well for me. Um, people just love them. In fact, I'm giving a class on how to make them in a few weeks at the rec center where I work. All right, I just want to smooth all these joints down, smooth the edges down. And you can, you know, you can make variations on the tail, uh, variations on the wing and the feet, and, you know, give it your own personality. I've seen some really cute ones. Um, uh, you know, people I've, people who've uh, not copied them, but, you know, made the same type, but they've added their own little variations and they're really, really cute. So... Don't be afraid to, you know, give it some character. Okay. I can't believe it's already Thanksgiving next week. Goodness sakes, I I'm usually in a bunch of shows and I don't I don't know this year I just couldn't get my act together. Well, the one show I was supposed to be in, you know, as I as I told you, my son had an emergency, a medical emergency, and then um, so I had one at my house. But then I'm usually in another big show, and then they moved that to the same day that I was having it at my house. So that was a disappointment and so I don't know it's been I need to wash my hands up in the water the more I get the clay on me it's getting all over the bird there we go I'll smooth him down so he's nice and smooth Gotta be a pretty bird, huh? The underglaze will fill in some, but now this one, since it's white clay, I probably could use that cinnamon underglaze and it'd be really pretty. It's the only thing about putting newspaper in here, then you know it gets it can get kind of bumpy. Unless you really um smash the newspaper good um, I'm just trying to smooth the edges now the tail and like I said I can do 
can do a lot more when it firms up. Um, but I want to get it as, as close to finished as possible for you guys so you can, you know, see it. So I'm just smoothing down the clay. And I have a little indentation here that I don't like, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of clay here. And smooth that out. Yeah, so if you press too hard and you get a fingerprint in there, um, it's easiest just to get some soft clay and just work it in there with your finger and smooth it out rather than trying to take it apart and you know push it back out just just add some clay there we go I make some other little bluebirds and I make those by um, I should do a little video on that too. I don't know if you saw my blue my bluebirds. They're kind of just a there's a lot of people, a lot of potters who make them. They're just kind of um, whimsical whimsical bluebirds are not really anatomically correct. They're just kind of fun little fat bluebirds. <laughs> okay so Here we go. There's the body. And he's pretty, he's really soft. So I'll probably come back. Um, I'll probably wrap him good, wrap him up good when I'm done here. Um, and probably come back tonight. I'm going to have to teach tomorrow too. So I'll probably come back tomorrow and work on him again when he's more stiff and hard, easier to. To work on. Yeah, I'm gonna cut a little bit out of the tail. And I'm gonna put some indentations. This is this is just an old pen that I got that looks like an old it's supposed to look like a paintbrush, but I love the end of it. Um I use this for everything. So this one, I'm going to put some indentations in here for feathers. There we go. Um, my other ones, I didn't do this, but I really think um, I like the texture. And I'll show you what I did here in just a minute. Um, I'm going to add the eyeballs on. So I'm going to take the eyeball, I'm going to put my finger down in there so that it looks like that and do the other one. And then I'm going to just kind of take my sponge, my damp sponge and just kind of smooth out, you know, because when you do that, if it's the clay's been sitting around, it gets, it dries up a little bit and it cracks a little bit. I don't really want all those cracks in there. So just, just take a damp sponge and smooth it out a little bit. That's how, this is how I make my fish eyeballs and I get my fishy. Okay, so now, oh wait, yeah, these have the little, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so I'm going to score the back, add a little slip, I'm going to lay him down, I'm going to add a little slip, score a little bit. So these, now, I'm going to add them at the same time. I'm going to add one on this side. And one on this side. And then gently squeeze them together. There we go. 
see I'm just kind of it's hard there we go okay you're a sad looking birdie right now you need some more loving don't you okay so And some texture to his tail on this side too now. So okay, so you can see the texture. So he's coming together. And then he's got to be able to breathe, right? So we're going to add little little nostrils to each side of his nose. There you go. Put little nostrils in there and I'm gonna put a hole in the bottom here well let's see before I do that let's put the wings on okay so I'm gonna cut these wings down just a little bit I think they're a little too big for the bird so I'm gonna lay them on top of each other And just make them a little bit smaller. Because I mean, you can just kind of ad lib. Okay. I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to add some texture to these two. Yeah, like I said, my other ones I didn't add any texture to, but I think I really like adding a little bit. It just gives it a little more dimension. Alrighty. Okay, so see that? And I'm going to score the backs. And add a little slip. The slip here is pretty watery. I think it had gone bone dry, so I added. But that's fine. Let's see. And then I want to score this a little bit where I'm going to put it on. the sponge and just kind of smooth that on there and I want to smooth down the edges Do the other side. Score the spot where I put the, the wing on. sure he's adhered really well because if he's not if it doesn't stick well it can clay has a memory and so this was laying flat on the table so once it's lay, it's on here I'm bending it so when it's in the kiln it's going to want to straighten back out 
Okay. So I think that is it. I'm done. Okay, I'm going to put a hole in the bottom. This is where the wire will go for the feet. Let's see. I think I'm going to use something. There we go. Hold the bottom. I'm going to put a hole in the top. This is where the wire will go to hang him. And so now that I've put these holes in there, um, he's going to lose the air inside, so you have to be more careful. I can see the newspaper in there. So there'll be an air hole here and an air hole at the bottom for that newspaper to burn out um, in the bisque fire. Yeah, and I will. So there you go. Let's move back a little bit. So there is the red bird. And once he hardens up a little bit, I will trim him a little bit better. Um, yeah. And I'll smooth, smooth around the edges a little bit more. 